This video will describe the AccuFastest system, its installation and its operation in order to produce these multi-sided cylinders as well as these multi-faceted discs. In order to use the AccuFastest system, you first of all need an AccuSlice index table with a rail and the AccuSlice carriage which rides on roller bearings on the AccuSlice table. You might also want to consider an additional vacuum system to collect the additional sawdust that's going to be collected on top of the band cell. The AccuFacet system consists of a number of components, consisting of the L-bracket support plate, two pattern discs, a ramp with two magnets, two safety shields, a handle for the Accu sled, and a package of accessory mounting hardware. The heart of this system is this L-bracket support plate, which contain the angle indexing positions marked on the base of the bracket, plus three sets of mounting holes for the pattern disc. The indexing positions are marked on the base of the L-bracket support plate at 10 degree intervals from 0 up to 90 degrees. These index angles will set the degree of cuts that you will be making on the bandsaw. Using these index positions, you can actually cut angles from 0 to 120 degrees. The L-bracket support plate mounts onto the anchor sled in any two of the quarter by 20 inch tapped holes in the AccuSled plate. All these tapped holes on the AccuSled are spaced two inches apart. I attach the L-bracket support plate to the sled using one of the two brass thumb screws that are included in the accessory package. First I use one of the brass thumb screws to attach the pivot hole on the base of the L-bracket support plate to one of the outside holes in the sled. This pivot point enables you to rotate the uh, L-bracket support plate at various angles. And then you would uh, set that angle by attaching the second thumb screw into the second hole and screwing it into the plate on the AccuSled system. There are three sets of mounting positions on the vertical wing of the L-bracket support plate. And these are used depending on the diameter of wood you'll be cutting. The bottom hole is for wood up to two and a half inches in diameter. And the top set of holes is wood blocks up to six and a half inches in diameter. This large hole is used to mount the pattern disc to the L-bracket support plate using this thumb screw. On each side of these three mounting holes are three auto indexing pins which will lock the selected facet angle by indexing in the holes in the base of the pattern disc. Included with the AccuFacet system are two pattern discs. One of the discs is designed for 10-sided faceting cuts, and the second disc is used for 12-sided faceting cuts. Additional pattern discs are also available. <clears throat> In the center of each of the pattern discs is a stainless steel shoulder bolt, which has been fixed to the pattern disc. On the pattern disc are a set of 10 or 12 small indexing holes. These holes will align the auto-indexing pins on the L-bracket support plate. Also on the pattern disc are a set of four countersunk holes, which can be used to attach the wood blocks to the pattern disc. The four number six wood screws included in the mounting hardware package are used to attach the wood blanks to the pattern disc. You could also use double-sided tape, but my preference is to use the screws since they hold the wood much more securely. The pattern disc with a shoulder bolt is inserted into the large hole on the L-bracket support plate and then secured with the large black thumb screw. The handle included with the AccuFacet system is designed to screw into any one of the tapped holes in the AccuSled plate. This handle just makes it much easier to push the AccuSled system through the bandsaw blade. The handle can be attached in any position, whatever is comfortable for you. The ramp used with the AccuFacet system is the same uh, ramp that we use with the AccuWed system, but we've added a second magnet to provide additional holding power uh, for the ramp due to the large pieces of wood that you may be cutting off on the wood blocks. The purpose of this ramp again is to divert the wood pieces away from the bandsaw blade so they don't get jammed up against the bandsaw blade. We recommend you position it in the center of the bandsaw blade and about an eighth of an inch away from the bandsaw blade just so it's not touching the bandsaw blade. The next critical component of the AccuFacet system are the two safety shields. These safety shields are a must and are required for the safe operation of the AccuFacet system. You should never use the AccuFacet system without both of these safety shields. When using the bandsaw with the AccuFacet system, the top blade guide on the bandsaw 
is quite high off the bandsaw table, more than six inches. This exposes more than you know six to ten inches of bandsaw blade to the operator. As a result, we developed these safety shields that are designed to go on both sides of the bandsaw blade to protect the operator from being exposed to this bandsaw blade. The first shield mounts on the AccuSled table. It's comprised of a 6 inch by 6 inch plastic shield with an aluminum bracket which mounts into the two linear slots on the AccuSled table. Two hex nuts with thumb screws secure the shield to the AccuSled table. After aligning and inserting the hex nuts into the channel on the sled, the safety shield should be positioned close to your board that you will be cutting and then secured to the AccuSled table with the two thumb nuts. The outside edge of the safety shield should be near the edge of the AccuSled table which will position it close to the bandsaw blade. The second safety shield mounts to the bandsaw on the opposite side of the bandsaw blade. This shield is comprised of a 6 inch by 12 inch tall plastic shield with an aluminum mounting bracket with a mag jig clamp on the base. This shield is positioned close to the bandsaw blade but far enough away so that it does not interfere with the board you are cutting. The shield is secured to the bandsaw table using the mag jig clamp. When using the AccuFastest system, you will need to pull the AccuSled with your woods mounted sample back in front of the bandsaw blade with this first safety shield in front of the bandsaw blade. In doing so, as you're adjusting your wood, these two shields protect your hands from getting anywhere near that bandsaw blade. Again, let me emphasize that both safety shields must be correctly positioned and used when using the AccuFastest system to ensure the safe, safe operation of the system. As you see here, I've added an additional vacuum system to my bandsaw table top to catch the sawdust that will be generated on top of the bandsaw table. Since the blade guide on the bandsaw is so high off the table and you're cutting wood very high off the system, a lot of sawdust is created which does not get captured by the normal dust collection system on your bandsaw. The sawdust can get into the roller bearings on the AccuSled and require their frequent cleaning. I've tried to minimize this problem by making a dust shield for my AccuSled but the dust can still migrate into the roller bearings and then require frequent cleaning of these roller bearings. The dust shield shown here is a prototype. It is not included with the system and is currently not available. I normally position the vacuum hose as close as possible to catch as much sawdust as possible. After I finish each project, I do remove the AccuSled uh, from the rail and clean the roller bearings. I just wipe off the accumulated sawdust with a dry paper towel Before we begin, we need to attach our wood block to the pattern disc. If you're cutting wood blocks larger than 5 inches in diameter, you probably need to cut these round on your bandsaw so you have enough clearance uh, on the top of your sled. If you have a large block on here, you know, this edge could be hitting the edge of the table. So on large pieces of wood, you know, just pre-cut them on the bandsaw to get them somewhat round. Okay, the wood uh, blocks are attached to the pattern disc with some number 6 flathead wood screws that are included in the accessory package. On large blocks of wood such as this 4 inch or 5 inch uh, piece of wood I probably use uh, 4 screws but on these small pieces of wood uh, 2 screws is sufficient. And here I marked off the center and I actually pre-drilled 2 holes to uh, attach my 2 screws. As stated earlier you could also use double sided tape. And then just screw it in place. And then this block is attached to one of the uh, three mounting holes in the L-bracket support plate. Now, I always try and mount it on the, the lowest hole possible, because the lower down, the more support and less vibration you're going to get. So this you know, small block of wood, I would not mount up here. I'd probably mount it, it won't quite fit in the bottom one, but it'll fit in the middle one. Then I can lock it in place with my large black thumb screw. You just need to make sure that you can rotate you know, the block so this bottom edge doesn't hit the, the sled. Let me first describe how these uh, indexing pins work. Let me remove this quickly. Now on this L-bracket support plate are three of these indexing pins. And these indexing pins have a shoulder on them. You can pull them out and lock them in position. And then when you release it, if I was to release this, the pin pops through and you can see it pops through here. So the idea is to put your, you know, mount your piece of wood with the pattern disc onto the system and that pin will lock in one of these alignment positions on the uh, pattern disc and you release it by just turning it till it locks in position 
And that's how you index your piece of wood. And there's, I said there's 12 holes in this piece of wood, so I can index it you know, 12 times. So normally I just lock it open like that. I can mount my wood, lightly tighten the knob, but not really tight, and release my pin. And as I rotate my wood, it'll lock in place. And you actually, as, you, as you're turning it, you, you pull the pin back a little bit, start rotating it, and as soon as it reaches an index position, it locks in place. And you just keep doing that. Just pull a pin out of here. Show it closer here. I just pull this pin out of here, start to rotate my piece of wood, and then it locks in place as it goes around. And that's how these indexing pins work. Okay, we're getting near ready to cut our, our first uh, piece of wood. And I usually make my first cut at 90 degrees to get my, my 12 facets all the way around this board. So I put this into the 90 degree position, lock it in place, and then tighten the two thumb screws, making sure that's also locked. Now I can move this closer, the shoe closer to my board. And I can also lower my blade guide. Clear my shield. So my safety shield, you know, is just clear my blade guide. And then I want my second shield just far enough so it doesn't, you know, I don't want to hit the piece of wood here, so I move it back a little bit. So now you can see as I'm adjusting my wood here, as I'm doing this and rotating my wood, you know, these two shields are protecting my hands from that blade. And as soon as I round off this piece, I can actually move the shield in closer. So now I get everything tight, I got my two brass thumb screws tight, I got my black a knob tight, I got my in first index position. I'm going to go ahead and cut 12 positions. Now I decide, decide where I want to cut. And I just uh, adjust my index table to give me my first cutting position. And I can use my indexing wheel, you know, to get to a minor adjustment if I need it. If I want to move it in 50 thousandths or so, I can easily do that. But then I lock it in place. So everything's locked in place, both my course adjustment knobs and my mag jigs, and I'm ready to start my cuts now. So again, let me uh, go back and do my corner here first. So again, checking everything, make sure everything's tight, making sure my blast, brass thumb nuts are tight, my black knob is tight, my wood is secure, my safety shields are in place, and my dust collection system, which I'll turn on in a second here, and I got my handle here. And I, don't, I prefer not doing this, because I have to get my hands close to the blade. That's the purpose of the handle. So all my movement is out here, getting everything far away from that bandsaw blade. The bandsaw blade I'm using today is a half inch wide blade by 10 teeth per inch Timberwolf blade. I also have used the 8 teeth per inch blade, which will give a somewhat rougher cut. After turning on the uh, bandsaw and the uh, additional vacuum system, I start to pass the sled through the bandsaw blade. I use the handle on the AccuSled to move the sled with the wood block attached. After the cut is finished, I pull the sled back so that the safety shield on the AccuSlice is in front of the bandsaw blade. After you made your first cut, brought the sled back, you slightly loosen the large black knob holding the pattern disc, pull out the black knob on the brass indexing pin, and slowly start to rotate the pattern disc. You can release the indexing pin at this time. As you continue to rotate the pattern disc, you should hear an audible click as the index pin indexes with the next index position in the pattern disc. Then tighten the black thumb screw holding the pattern disc in place and go ahead and make the next cut. And continue to repeat this procedure until all 12 facets have been cut. And then you can turn the bandsaw off and View your results. Okay, you notice every time I did a cut and did an adjustment, I made sure I pulled this back so that these safety shields were in front of the bandsaw blade. Again, that just keep my hands far away from that bandsaw blade and make sure everything is safe. So I got my first 12 cuts on this block of wood. And there's my first set of set of cuts. So if you notice on my pattern disc, I put these silver lines every second indexing position. And I did this for doing faceting. So that usually when I'm faceting, I'm not cutting 12 positions like I did for this first cut, but I'm cutting you know, six positions and I'm skipping a position. So these silver lines just give me an indexing position so I can visually 
check that I'm doing everything correctly, that I'm not, you know, getting 12 cuts when I only, when I only want to get six. So the first time I'll cut, you know, this position and in this position and all the way around, then when I change my angle again, I'll cut this position and this position. And I'll, and I'll show that here in a second. So if you start cutting this, now I cut my, my 12 sides, now I'm going to cut an angle from the top, cutting a, trying to get a point on the top. Now that I've cut that smaller, I can actually use this bottom position, a little more stable. So I'll go ahead and use that bottom position now for cutting my next set of facets. Okay, I'm now ready to cut my first angle, and I'm going to change this to well, probably uh, maybe 20 degrees. And I did that just by selecting my 20 degree position on my plate and screwing it in the perpendicular hole with the Yankee slit plate. Now I need to release my magnets, my magic clamps, and move this back and decide where I'm going to cut. And I want to cut such that I'm cutting, making sure I'm cutting a little past center until I get the entire piece of wood. And again, I can lock it in place with my course adjustment knobs and then use my fine adjust to get exactly where I want to make my first cut. And then I can lock my mag jigs in place. And again, I'm getting adjust my shield and I'm you know, protected from that, getting my fingers near the blade. After you make your first cut, again, pull the sled back behind the safety shield and loosen the large black thumb nut and rotate the pattern disc. But make sure you rotate it to index positions because you're going to be cutting only six facets on this board. Then lock the large black knob in place, make your cut, and repeat it until all six sides have been cut. Okay, that's my first cut on that uh, piece of wood. And I did cut every second segment. As a result, you see I got six facets on that. So what I'll be doing now is I'll be cutting another set of facets, but instead of cutting on this plane, I'll be cutting across this plane here, probably about halfway down. So once again I have to, first of all, change my angle. So instead of uh, 20 degrees, maybe I go to say 50 degrees in this case. Make sure those are tight and reposition my table to where I want it to cut. Okay, that's all set. I'll lock my mag jigs in place, and we'll make this second cut. For the second layer of facets, I first of all need to move the pattern disc by one step. I rotate the pattern disc by one step as described previously, lock it in place, and proceed to cut my facet. After the cut is complete, I pull the sled back so the safety shield is in front of the bandsaw blade. I slightly loosen the black thumb screw, rotate the pattern disc by two steps, lock it in place, and proceed to cut my facet. And I repeat this until all six facets have been cut. Okay, that finishes our second cut on that. And now you can see what I did. That first cut, I cut you know, six at that angle, then I changed it a half a step over to cut the facets on this side. Okay, there's some additional videos to follow which will describe, you know, using this to make some patterns, uh, making some actual projects uh, using this technique. Uh, there will also be additional videos showing uh, how we sand these facets. We made another jig for the uh, disc sander that you can use the same Accu facet system on the uh, disc sander to sand these facets. Because you can see they're fairly rough. You might be able to see the, the texture in there from the bandsaw blade. You can sand it by hand, but it would take quite a bit of work. It's, much easier if you use a fine disc on a disc sander. These are just a few of the projects completed with the AccuFacet system, which will be demonstrated in future videos. For additional information on the AccuFacet system, including additional videos and pictures of our projects, please visit our website and click on the AccuFacet tab.